Hello and thank you for watching. This is STSC back again with LEGO Transformers The Fallen. In the movie, The Fallen never actually transforms, so we don't really know what he's supposed to turn into. Of course, Hasbro came up with the design that they used on all of their toys, but I wanted to come up with something new. And right now, from this angle, it might not really look like that much of anything. Looking at it from a better angle, I do think it looks pretty cool. It is kind of just a robot folded up, but I think it's believably Cybertronian. It's not just a mess of robot bits. I think there's some kind of cool shape to it going on. I like these winglets on the side here, and they kind of remind me of Movie 1 Megatron's arms in alternate mode when they kind of formed these stretching forward winglets. Uh, you'll notice he has a nose cone here, which is actually his robot mode face. If this was a uh, proper Hasbro toy, there would probably be some kind of cage or detailing to cover this up a little better. Uh, but I do like the idea of him having his face up here, a lot like Movie 1 Megatron or Movie 2 Megatron, who both had their faces kind of exposed in their alternate mode. It kind of conveys this level of power, like he just doesn't care. He doesn't fear anyone. He's just got his face on full display. Of course, I'm sure for a lot of people, this would seem kind of silly or <laughs> maybe even lazy. And I mean, I can't deny it. Uh, admittedly, there's just not a lot of places to put his head, but I do think it looks fine. And I think it's kind of a neat idea. And it has precedence in the movies that the Decepticons, especially their leaders, seem to display their heads in alternate mode when they are uh, in Cybertronian forms. In the back, he has two pods with tail fins on it, which I think you can guess what those might become. And in the center, he has this kind of cockpit section. Or, well, if it was an Earth jet, this is where the cockpit would be, but of course it's Cybertronian, so there's no pilot. But I really like how this looks, kind of the smoothness with the little jump in the center. And coming to the sides, you'll see these struts that support the uh, little winglets here. And I really like how there's multiple struts here, and they all kind of form this solid connection between the body of the plane and the wings. I do think this jet looks pretty cool. It definitely is just a folded up robot, but I think it looks a little more interesting than the one they came up with for the original toys. It just feels a little more appropriately alien, especially for a character like the Fallen, who's such a weird robot. For size comparison, here we have a minifigure. And here we have Megatron, who looks a little bit out of place next to his leader because, well, he's a very ordinary truck next to a very weird alien spaceship. That's all there is to say about this mode, so it's time to transform. And here we have the Fallen in his robot mode. When designing this guy, I pretty much just built this mode and tried to figure out a jet from there. And I definitely think it was worth it, because I'm really happy with how this mode looks. Admittedly, most of my nostalgia for Revenge of the Fallen has kind of faded away, so I can't say I'm a huge fan of the Fallen's design in general. I do like how alien it is, but I don't think it's a very convincing Transformer. From looking at him, he doesn't really look like he turns into anything at all. 
But all that aside, I am genuinely very happy with this guy, and I think he looks pretty cool. It might be a little hard to tell through the video, but I actually used two different shades of orange on this guy. Some of it, like the tips of his spear, is the trans-neon orange, while other small bits, like the chi slopes in his armpits, is just regular trans-orange. Side by side, they're noticeably different, but when they're both put on black, it's a little harder to tell them apart. But overall, I think it looks pretty cool, especially since a lot of the orange on him is supposed to have that fiery glow to it. I tried to focus the brighter orange on areas that I felt would have higher energy. The tip of his spear, his core, his joints, or the center of his arm. Whereas parts where the energy would be dissipating are a little bit lighter. His wrist, the little details on his arm guards, or on the back of his shoulder pads. But as I said, on camera, it's a little harder to tell the difference. Looking at him from behind, you'll see there is kind of kibble in the back here. These are the winglets in alternate mode, and you can see they swing forward to form his spiky shoulder pads. I don't actually think in the movie he has something like this that juts out on the back, but that aside, I think it looks pretty cool, and I don't think it looks ugly on the back here. You may have noticed that his spear was actually integrated into his transformation. I'm really happy I was able to do that, as it means you don't have to discard his accessory when he transforms. Though, of course, if you want to, you can always just take it out of his hand now. Speaking of which, if you do take away his spear, you can always bend it in half and have him give you his face. Though, unfortunately, there is no other face underneath. I did build this little matrix, which is originally IX Rollout IX's design. I believe he built it for his old Fallen many, many years ago. But, unfortunately, it's kind of hard to get him to hold it. So, yeah, it's not the best accessory, exactly. Because, well, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. For size comparison, here we have a minifigure. And Megatron. I believe the Fallen is supposed to be significantly taller than Megatron, but personally I went for a smaller scale because I just think it looks better. For articulation, the Fallen has a rotation at his neck. It can kind of look up and down a little bit, but it's really more of a wiggle. And it can tilt side to side here. Though, obviously if you tilt it too much it starts to look kind of wonky. Unfortunately, his shoulders are completely locked. There is no articulation to be found here. But his elbows do have a decent range. They can swivel here. They get a bend here. And they get another bend here. So, depending on what you want to do, you can kind of bend it here to get a lower bend. Or, if you want to get the arm up higher, you can bend it there. And then the wrist can swivel. In his lower body, he has a waist swivel and an ab crunch, which has a fair bit of range. Then in the legs, he has a universal joint for the hips that has pretty much as much range as you can get and can go outwards. Then at the knees, he has two joints because he's got the digitigrade knees. So you can bend like this and you can extend it forward like that. Then there is a swivel at the base of the knee right here. And you can also use the second swivel here if you really want to. Then at the feet, he has independent toe movement if you want to wiggle his toes a little bit. He can tilt his ankle this way, and he can tilt his ankle the other way. And you pretty much get full 90 degree range for that tilt and these tilts. The lack of a shoulder joint definitely does limit the amount of poses he can get into. But I still think the Fallen can look pretty cool as long as you work around the stiffness in the arms. I have to say I like this guy a lot more than I expected to, and having them all built up kind of has me wanting to build a pyramid for him to stand on. So maybe I have a little more nostalgia for Revenge of the Fallen than I thought. But for now, that's all I have to say about this guy, so I'll see you next time.